take a look at the tail of the tape brought to you by TNT window tinting and that is maybe not the tale that you were thinking that we were going to be telling right now as I had on my card that Laura Sanchez was going to fight next. Uh-uh-uh. We got another fight here going first, and that is Seijo Imazaki versus Austin Luchin as we have seen Imazaki fight here a couple of times at the Chosen Few Fighting Championships, and he is one and one. Now, we saw a first-round loss that he had against Dante Skiro. Hey, a lot of people have lost to Dante Skiro. No shame in that one. His last fight was in Chosen Few Fighting Championships, number 16, a win over Nolan Kane. It was an injury victory as Kane got hurt in that fight, and Imazaki was declared the winner. Not how anybody wants to win and or lose, but you got to take that sometimes as it comes, as it did for Imazaki in his last appearance here on Chosen Few Fighting Championships. Imazaki is checked out and ready to rumble as he will head on up to the cage as we will take a look at the guy who calls himself the Funky Bird, Austin Luchin. If you've ever seen the video, The Whip by Loxley, in the video, they throw out a bunch of paint, like they have a paint fight. It looks like Austin Luchin was at that paint fight as he came in wearing that kind of shirt, dancing like he was in The Whip as well. But this ain't the kind of music that would fit that thing. He calls himself the Funky Bird. Oh, he's funky, all right. This guy is a character. Hell, even his socks look like they've been in a paint fight. He is all funky, if you will, from top to bottom and getting checked out right now. I like him. We've seen him fight at a couple of different times. We've seen him here in this Chosen Few Fighting Championship cage. We also saw him at the Sylvie part of a different promotion as well, fighting there. And Austin Luchin's kind of fun to watch. He hits you from different angles. And sometimes weird guys like that that are kind of unorthodox, they can give you trouble, don't they, Gerald? You don't know what to expect sometimes. The movement's like different, the timing's different, and let me tell you, if nothing else, we are seeing some next level pageantry on the entrances tonight. Yeah, absolutely. The, the music and the walkout has been top tier. Yep. CFFC. <laughs> For sure, as Lucid getting a couple laps in around the cage as well as we go up to Chris. First, this man fighting out of the TNT red corner. He represents the Imasaki Dojo and hails from Chicago, Illinois. In two professional bouts, he has one victory, standing in at six foot one inches tall, weighing in at 165 pounds. Please welcome Seijo Imasaki. His opponent, this man, fighting out of the Kearns blue corner. He stands in at 5 foot 11 inches tall, weighing in at 165 ready pounds. He represents Primal Milwaukee and hails from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Undefeated in his short pro career, one bout, one victory. Please welcome the Funky Bird, Austin Luchin. If you're wondering when it was the last time you saw him here at Chosen Few, it was Chosen Few Fighting Championships number 15. That was back in September of 2018, a unanimous decision decision over JT Schulte in that one. It was a fight that Luchin dominated when he was an amateur. He is 1-0 right now. He has switched gyms. By the way, the last time we saw him, he was fighting for Red Schaefer, now out of Primal. MKE is Luchin, and he is usually the guy that will take the fight to the other guy. Imazaki, more of a counter striker. We'll see if that plays out here as this fight moves along. It's already I saw Imazaki kind of touch Luchin's chin with the right hand. Nothing really much on it, but we know for sure he, right there again, not a lot of pop, but he can find the range, and Luchin's going to have to, I think, deal with a longer fighter, which I don't know that he's maybe accustomed to, but right now, good game plan so far, switching it up, working for that takedown, got the broomstick takedown, and could possibly have the back here if Imazaki can't escape. And a beautiful broomstick, too. You don't see that used quite a bit, but with his back against the cage, it's the second time, by the way, that Seijo has grabbed the cage to avoid from being taken down. Unfortunately, Tom missed them both, but it's happening right in front of us here. Luchin happy to climb on the back of Imazaki. Gives it up, though, as Seijo able to get away. Luchin, one of those guys 
He, he calls himself the funky bird. He moves kind of differently. Like you were talking about, his timing's a little different. He'll hit you from different angles. And right now, the counter striker, Imazaki, seems to want to take the fight to Lujan. So already an unorthodox start and a, an off, like, kind of uh, verse kind of start to this fight. Right, good body shot there from Luchin, but in this case, Imazaki's always got some awkward, or also, I should say, has some awkward timing with his strikes. Uh, it's not the normal cadence you see out of guys, and I think that might be throwing Luchin off as well. Ooh, good switch behind the back there. Imazaki looking for a throw, but Luchin in the better position. And if he can't get the takedown, he's doing a good job here. Get him against the cage, land some strikes, at least create some kind of damage or get a positive outcome off that grappling exchange if you can't get him to the mat. I like the pressure that Luchin's putting on right now. This is right where you want to keep Imazaki because as you saw before, he was setting up his length, setting up that rhythm as far as his left hand, and he landed it twice, but like you said, he was just making sure it was going to land, and you knew power shots were soon to come. So Luchin's doing a great job. Again, time and space, what we talk about a lot here uh, with Gerald inside of the cage. Luchin doing a great job making sure Imazaki's not going to throw that left hand again. Luchin again with another takedown, now getting a couple lefts into the side of Imazaki. Imazaki, by the way, he is not one who likes to go the distance. Nine fights total between amateur and pro. Only two have gone the distance. Early finishes is what he's usually looking for or what will usually happen to him. Rich, I love you to death, but there are zero fighters, fighters you'll find on the planet that likes to go the distance. <laughs> <laughs> it always seems like there's some that inevitably yeah, do, though, every fight, doesn't it? I mean, they just drag him out. Oh, he might be in on that choke. He's really got him flattened out. That is that's it. it. Yeah, boy, you know, that was kind of behind us. It's kind of hard to tell. But Luchin able to finish Imazaki. Hey, almost on cue. When I said he doesn't like going the distance, he didn't want to go the distance in this one either. Luchin getting the choke, finishing the fight, and that will do it. Another first round finish here on our pro car. Luchin is victorious. We'll get the official word from Chris right after this on TVW. Ladies and gentlemen, the end of this bout comes at two minutes, 56 seconds of round number one for your winner by rear naked choke and still undefeated, the funky bird, Austin Luchin. Well, that decision came as fast as the finish as we were trying to take a look at the finish. And if we can run it now, I'm sure that we could take another look. But Austin Luchin getting the rear naked choke on Imazaki in the first round as we take a look at it right here it was kind of hard for us to see it we were behind it but there is Luchin being able to finish off Imizaki and it came just a couple minutes into that first round Luchin is now two and oh as now we will get a chance to see Laura Sanchez she is next on TVW